guys, it's Lauren. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing a review on the new Ciate London Marble Metal Eyeshadows. Here's what one of them looks like. I have the shade Entwined, but there are four other shades, five in total. I'll insert their, their pictures here if you want to see what those four other shades look like. But I do only have this one here. However, the formula is supposed to be consistent throughout all five of the shades. It's supposed to be a reflective metallic glitter eyeshadow formula, which comes in a pot. So I'm going to be talking about the different ways that I used it in today's video. I'm also going to be doing swatch comparisons with products that are similar to this one letting you know price per gram which one would be you know most worth it uh, like cost wise I will also be doing you know swatches with the product with my finger doing swatches with a brush swatches with Fix plus and doing a tutorial showing you how I created this look using this eyeshadow in conjunction with another palette so if you are interested in all of that then just keep on watching so I want to do a quick rundown of the product here's what it looks like this product retails for $24 and in it you're getting four grams. You can see that it comes in a jar and this is, like I mentioned before, a reflective metallic glitter pressed eyeshadow and it is highly pigmented. So this product is cruelty free as well as the other two that I'm going to be comparing it with in a minute. So if that is a factor, you know, maybe that helps you, maybe it doesn't, but at least that way you do have more options if you are cruelty free. So I will show you the inside of the product and when I do, you can see that it has this little thing that keeps the product compressed. I don't know the proper term for it, but it is going to keep the product nice and compact. And the reason you want it to be nice and compact is because one, you're not going to get as much fallout if you keep it pressed. So that way when the product applies, it's not going to be falling out everywhere. And then also for, you know, purposes of cleanliness, I have products and glitter shadows that just get everywhere because they're not pressed down. So for, you know, organization cleanliness purposes, if you don't want this to get all over your other makeup products, you definitely want to make sure you're keeping it pressed and compact and it'll help with the pigmentation. So that is a whole other thing to note. So now I'll show you what the inside of the product looks like. This is the shade Entwined. You can see it's, they describe it as a rose gold, and I would too. I would say it's definitely like a pinky rose. I know that rose gold can kind of be thrown around now. However, this does kind of have more of a silver undertone than a gold undertone. So that's another thing to note. If you're really looking for that true rose gold shade, I don't think this would necessarily be it. If you are, though, I just tried out one from L'Oreal. It's their Chromatic Bronze in the shade As If. I'll insert a picture right here. That is so good and like half the price. But it doesn't have that same really pigmented formula as this one. So here's what I want to show you again because I would describe this product as more of a, you know, pinky with a champagne undertone, a reflect to it. This is a very reflective product and you can tell because it does have, I don't know if you can see, but it has white in it. And that's interesting because it just really does add to the overall reflective look of it. This is a metallic shade, so it does kind of shift when you look. Not like a duochrome, but it does shift. So I want to really quickly go through and swatch this product for you. They do recommend applying this product with your fingers. So this is the way that it would probably show up in your eyes, whereas when you're swatching like a palette or something, a matte shade, you're not always going to be using your finger when you use it on your lid, but this will be pretty, you know, true to the way that it would appear on your eyelid. So here's what the product looks like swatched. This is just one dip in the product. You can see, very, very pretty. That's with my finger. Now I'm going to go in with a brush. And this is the Morphe. Oh my gosh, I'm getting product all over it. This is the Morphe M124 brush. It's a tapered kind of pressed brush, packing brush. You can see what that looks like. This is the blonde that I'm going to be using for the brush. And of course, when I put setting spray on it, I'm going to be using this same brush. So now I'm just dipping it in pretty good because you do kind of have to do that. Um, I kind of liked the way that this looked on my eyes in the tutorial portion. I'll show you. It's not nearly as pigmented, like not even close. I can go over it if you guys want. So this is another, you know, swatch of it again. This is not... You know, it's just not as pigmented. It's not as intense. And that may be what you're looking for. Like, for me, this is almost a little too metallic for me. But it is advertised as a metallic shadow. So I can't fault it for that because it's doing exactly what it said it would. So now, I'm going to go ahead and get my MAC Fix Plus ready. Here is what it looks like. You guys know I love this so much for not only setting my face, but, of course, making my shadows more metallic, more pigmented. So this probably, I'm expecting, it will you know, make it even more intense, but I'm not 100% sure. So now I'm going to be taking the little spray. Oh, let me remove that. I don't know what that is. It's like a big chunk of product, so that would probably not be true. You know, I guess I'll put it right here. 
you know, it's honestly not, like, it's... I don't know if you guys can see, but obviously the most pigmented way, like by far, is by just using it with my finger, like they recommend. So that's probably what I do. Um, I do find that it looks really pretty, a little bit less metallic when you use it with a brush. It kind of shears the product out a little bit, which I did enjoy in the tutorial portion of the video. I like that. So it kind of just depends on what you want to do, because you can either make it super pigmented by applying it with your finger, or you can kind of shear it out a little bit, make it look a bit a little bit more natural. I find that it blends almost better with the shadow that I had down when it was used with the brush. So that is another thing to note. So I wanted to compare this pressed glitter shadow to my all-time favorite two glitter pressed eyeshadow formulas. So first off, I have the Tarte Chrome Paint. Here's what this one looks like. It's in the shade Top Yacht. And then we have the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter Shadow, if it'll focus, in the shade Reflect. So out of these two, my favorite is the Hourglass one. I am obsessed with that formula. The formula on these are very similar to the Ciate one, and that is what we are comparing today when we do the swatches and just when something to consider when we're doing the price per gram breakdown. But I wanted to say these are not going to be exact shade dupes. They're not even really dupes whatsoever. Like these shades are all very, very different, especially Top Yacht from Tarte. And so I definitely wanted to mention that, but we're really looking at the formula. Those are what is so similar. And of course, there may be shades that are comparable to, you know, the Ciate one and both of these Hourglass and Tarte lines, but I'm just not sure. So that can be something you can look into depending on which one you think looks like the best formula to you, but I definitely wanted to break them down. So I wanted to start off with the Ciate one. I already mentioned that this one is $24 for four grams of product, which breaks down obviously to $6 per gram. So this is an interesting, it's a pretty good value compared to some of the other ones that I've seen. This looks really good and you guys already saw swatches of this one. I will go ahead and put one down though just for comparison uh, when I do the other two. We are going to be taking the Tarte one which retails for $22 in total and you are getting three grams of product in that one and so that breaks it down to be about $7.30 per gram. So this one is more expensive than the Ciate one. Again this is the shade Top Yacht. This is one of those pressed glitter shadows that is no longer pressed um, as far as it goes for me because you can kind of see it's loose now. I can't remember if it came with one of those compact things to keep the product, you know, really pressed down. I don't remember, but I definitely don't have it anymore. I'm just going to go in really softly with my finger. It's not going to be as pigmented because I'm not really pressing it because I don't want the product to get everywhere. I don't really have anything to clean it up, but here's Top Yacht, the Tarte Chrome Paint. Here's what that one looks like. Really pretty. This shade is beautiful. It's like a gold that you're never going to like. A gold champagne mixture. It's not too gold, but it's not too champagne. It's a perfect in-between. So as far as shades, if you like that one, I recommend it. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. So then we have the... Oh my gosh, I was about to pick up the CLJ one again. No. Then we have the Hourglass Scattered Light Glitter in the shade Reflect. This is... Mm, let me make sure. Yeah, $29 and in it you are getting 5 grams of product so it breaks down to about $8.30 per gram. So this one out of all three is probably the worst value. However, look at this shade Reflect. It is beautiful. The formula on this, the wear time, it looks so creamy. It really, I mean, it plays well. So that is one swipe of each one. I was about to go in and kind of build it up just because I love it so much. But that's one swipe of each of them. Uh, going from Ciate to Tarte to the Hourglass. So the best value is actually the Ciate one, and I think, you know, that is says a lot. Um, I kind of feel like Ciate is a growing brand, and Hourglass and Tarte are a lot more established, so the fact that you can get the Ciate one for a pretty good value compared to some of the other ones that you can get at Ulta and Sephora, that's definitely something to keep in mind and note. So we are really zoomed in for this tutorial. I know I can go in a little bit more, but I kind of want to show you what I'm doing as I do it. And I thought this distance is pretty good. But I am going to be doing my eyeshadow in conjunction with a palette just because I haven't had a chance to try this out a lot with like on its own. Because I do love the simplicity of just like the little glitter. Um, I just love that. You guys know I'm pretty simplistic with my eyeshadow. But I do want to use it in conjunction with a palette because I do know that a lot of people like to use these shades, you know, these really pigmented shadows in conjunction with a palette to kind of just lay down a really nice base, make the focus even more intense on this single shadow. So I wanted to do just a really quick look, something very simple, so the main focus can be that eyeshadow. So I am going to be using this Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette. You guys know 
I love Too Faced shadows. I think they are great. So I really wanted to use a formula that is my tried and true so it doesn't, um, you know, clog my, you know, opinion of this eyeshadow. So here's what the inside of the palette looks like if you haven't seen it before. I'm sure you have. It's been out for a while. I think there's a lot of shades in here that would work really well with it, but I'm just going to kind of go through, show you what I'm doing. Starting off with taking this shade Divinity right here. It's just like a matte white. It is pretty white. I know a lot of bases are typically a little bit more neutral, maybe a little bit more yellow tone, but I want to use this one. And the thing that I normally do is I go literally from my lash line all the way up to my brow bone and just, you know, set that primer that I have down. I do have the Too Faced Shadow Insurance on right now. I didn't think it was important to really show the application of it, but I want to keep because I plan on just applying the shadow from uh, Ciate just on my lid, kind of just right up there to the crease, maybe a little bit lower so it doesn't, you know, transfer. But I want that base to be really tacky, so I'm not going to set it, but I am going to set kind of the top near my brow bone just really quickly. I keep awkwardly looking at the camera, like the viewfinder, because I want to make sure that like I'm in focus and I'm not like covering you guys with the palette and so you can really see what I'm doing. Please be sure to leave some feedback on this tutorial portion of the video because I don't do a lot of tutorials in, you know, my videos. So if you want me to go closer in the future, what you guys want to see. So I think that's pretty good, nice and set. I'm not trying to make anything too, too pigmented. I don't feel like I need to build it up a lot more. So now I'm going to be taking a brush that I love from Luxie. It is a little bit dirty because who has time to clean their brushes, honestly. This is um the 231 brush, the small tapered blending brush. So I'm going to start off by using this shade right here, um, Almond Truffle. It's kind of this... I'll do a swatch of it on my hand just because I think this shade is wonderful for rose gold shades, even though it's like not the most conventional. Kind of pretty. It's like a taupey purplish type shade, like very muted purple. So now I'm going to be taking it and I'm going to tap off my brush because I don't remember how pigmented this layer is on, but I can always add more. I can't take it away. Oh yeah, this is nice. So yeah, that's looking pretty nice. I really do enjoy that. So now I'm going to go in on the other eye. Sorry if you guys can hear the TV in the other room. I have some here, home alone, um, with my dog. And he, I just like, I don't know, like he like needs companionship. And so I like to always leave the TV on for him. That's just what we like to do. As weird as that is. Might go turn it down in a minute. So now I'm just kind of blending everything out, making sure it's nice and good. And just so you guys know, um, I feel like a lot of videos I've been watching recently um, you know, they're very specific in what they tell you to do, which is great because then that way you really can, you know, I don't know, get an idea of how to do your makeup. But just remember, like, even what I'm doing right now, the way that I'm, you know, making my shadow, the way that I'm really, like, arching my shadow and my crease is because that's the way my crease is. And I do, for my specific eye shape, that's what I need to do. But just remember that, like, it's your own makeup. Like, no one can tell you how to do your makeup. Like, it's your own thing. And that's the great thing about makeup. Like, there is no defined rule book that tells you what to do and what, like, not to do. Because makeup is creativity. At the end of the day, it's like an artistry. And, of course, I'm not the most artistic person in the world. I just really enjoy doing makeup. And so you can still do it. Like, there are no, you know, limiting things that say this person can't do makeup. Um, I just think that's important to, like, I don't know, point out. So I think that is actually nice and good. I am going to go ahead and take a, like, what is this? Just a short shader brush, um, also from Luxie. It is the number 223 I Love Luxie Brushes. I'm going to be taking that same shade, Almond Truffle, in this palette. And I'm going to be going underneath the eye to kind of, not all the way on the lower lash line, just kind of on the outer part of it. That way it'll... I don't know, I just find that that really helps the eyeshadow look look complete whenever I'm doing it. And I think that's going to be a more of a way for the single shadow from Ciate and Entwine to uh, stand out. <laughs> I highly recommend if you are either just starting out in makeup or you like a very blendable, buildable formula, I really recommend Too Faced. And I know back in the day this was a very you know, popular eyeshadow brand, but... I feel like people are kind of sleeping on it recently. I find that, you know, I like this formula better than a lot of other brands that I've tried out recently that I feel like a lot of people are talking about. I just find their formula to be really impressive. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go in with this single shadow from uh, Ciate. I keep wanting to say Stila, and I'm like, no. I think it's because Stila just came out with their new like suede shadows, and I'm really intrigued by them. So here we go. I might actually... I don't know whether I should go in with like my brush first, just to kind of see how that pigmentation goes. I might, yeah, go in with like a taper, uh, taper brush from Morphe. This is their... Uh, M124 brush. I think Morphe has a really wide selection of brushes, but I don't necessarily think they're the best quality. Like, I really prefer Luxie. I'm not quite sure how their brushes, like, stack up in price, but those are just ones that I prefer more. I really want to get more. So, yeah, I'm going to start off with going in with a brush to apply the single shadow from Ciate, but I might end up switching to my finger just depending on. I haven't used a brush yet. I typically use my finger with this type of, you know, eyeshadow formula so it's not as pigmented when I use my brush than it is with my finger but it's still pretty good in there like you can kind of see like it's applying for sure it's definitely important to note with this rose gold shade, um, but it is definitely a rose gold, kind of that more pinkier one. I know sometimes rose gold can come off as like, you know, champagne or whatever. Like I feel like when I'm picking out a lot of rose gold shades, I'm kind of expecting it to be champagne just because, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of the way that the market has been using uh, that shade name. So I kind of expect it to be something different than this. This, I would say, is more of like a pinkier shade, a very, like a lighter pink really pretty nonetheless and I think this is honestly more um I don't know what is it like true like true to color type shade I really like the way that this looks right now so now I'm gonna go in with the other eye and a brush the shadow is so creamy which I think is really interesting in the pot it like is like a cream to powder formula so it's kind of creamy when I put my brush in there but when I put it on my eye it's not that creamy which I really do like I don't love always using cream shadows just because I feel like they can get kind of creasy and uh, the texture can kind of turn out kind of funky and it transfers those cream shadows oh my goodness most cream shadows really do transfer and that's kind of an issue so yeah, that looks pretty good. That is what it looks like applied with just a brush. Now I'm going to go in really quickly with my finger just to see if I can kind of build up the product a little bit and see kind of the difference. You won't be able to tell very much, but I will be showing you, or if I already did, I don't know where it's going in, but I will be showing you in the swatches the comparison between, you know, using my finger, using a brush, using a brush with spray. You'll get to see all of that. So now I just went in with my finger. And you can see that pigmentation does layer up. I do find it to be more pigmented. For better or worse, that's kind of what you're getting. Um, so now that I have kind of added another layer, I am going to take just a tapered, or yeah, I'm going to take a tapered blending brush. And I'm not sure if I have a clean one sitting in front of me, but if I do, I'll try and find one. That way I can kind of blend everything out, make sure it's looking cohesive. So yeah, that is kind of going to be what we're going to do as far as, you know, including the eyeshadow. I do want to really quickly take just the end of this crown brush and go in in the shade Satin Sheets, that big, whoop, that big shade just right there. I think it would look really pretty in the inner corner and um, on the brow bone. I'm going really light. Typically, I'll go in with like a um, setting spray or like Fix Plus or something and really build up the pigmentation on my inner corner highlight because I think that is beautiful. I did do that in one of my more recent videos and I love the way that looked. Okay, I'm going to go in a little bit more. I just love the way an inner corner highlight looks. So now I'm going to be taking it on my brow bone right up here. Very soft because I don't want it to be as pigmented as, you know... That inner corner that looks kind of not natural so that is the eyeshadow look now I'm gonna go off camera really quickly use my Pat McGrath um, fetish eyes mascara love this stuff and go in with my um, Le Crown Le Crown Cole from Lancome this used to be way bigger but then I used it a lot so you know I really like it so I wanted to really quickly touch on my final thoughts on this product and ultimately it is a very good product I mean you saw the formula the pigmentation the metallic just the effect of it beautiful it there's literally no fallout normally I'll have to take like a brush and go underneath my eyes and kind of sweep it off and I don't even mind doing that but this had none and with the pigmentation level that you're getting I mean the price per gram it is a fairly good value especially 
especially compared to the other things um, that higher end brands carry. However, for me, and I guess I should have known this when I purchased the product, I'm not going to be returning it. I do really enjoy it. I think I'm going to get use out of it. Is it my all-time favorite? No. Obviously, I love these two very, very much. And even that L'Oreal one I was talking about earlier, my casual ones, I have a lot of glitter shadows that I do like better than this one. And that is because they are not as metallic and they don't have that flip that I don't necessarily love. I am just more of a glitter shimmery girl. That's what I'd rather have. And this, to me, had a little too pigment too much pigment for my taste. However, if you are obsessed with, you know, really intense metallic shadows, you know you like metallics, you will probably love this and some of the other shades that they do carry. So I wanted to kind of say, yes, I recommend it if you are in the market for a, you know, metallic product like this. If not, if you, you know, don't even like really, you know, glimmer, shimmery shadows, you may not like either of these, like the other two that I'm gonna recommend. Like I said, like if you like really glittery shadows, you're not a big fan of metallics, these may be better ones for you. Even though it may not be the best value, if you're gonna get use out of them, there's really, I mean, you don't have to really think about, you know, the price per gram, because if you're not gonna use this entire product and you know you'll use these two, then get these. So that's kind of my final thoughts on the product. I definitely think there's a lot to love about this one. So if you want to go in store, try it out. You know, maybe get a sample of that. I don't know if they can do that with this product. But if they can, I'd definitely try it first. All right, guys, that about wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up so that I can know to continue doing more reviews. I do have a few planned in the future, so I want to make sure that's something you want to see before I do go ahead and film them and get those uploaded for you guys. If you have any suggestions on products that you want me to review, whether they just launched or they've been out for a while, let me know in the comment section down below. If you're new here, you have not already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you wouldn't do click that little red button down below, as well as that notification bell so that you will be notified for all of my future posts and videos. I do have a lot of fun stuff coming up. I'm actually planning a giveaway, so definitely stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for checking out my channel and watching my video. You guys know it really means a lot to me, all of your support, and I definitely wanted to make sure that you guys know that. All right, um, yeah, my next video will be going up on Sunday. I hope you guys have a great 4th of July and a great weekend, and I will see you then. Bye.